Loli's Murder and Psychopath. These are a few of my favorite things, and this show not only has them, but all in the protagonist. She would be premium waifu material if she wasn't literally 10 instead of just looking at it, and Christ almighty, my brain goes to fucked up places when I'm sleep deprived. Hello everybody, my name is Juan John John, otherwise known as the Chosen Juan, or just Juan, and I'm here to talk about the first season of a show called The Saga of Tanya the Evil, and hopefully convince you to give it a watch. Why, you ask? Well... The Saga of Tanya the Evil is an adaptation of a light novel by an author calling himself Carlo Zen, and the first animation project by Studio Nut. Insert sex joke of choice here, a studio made up of alumni from Gainax and Madhouse, which honestly means nothing to me seeing as I decided to climb out the anime hole when I was in high school. By the way, fuck you autocorrect, that's all one word, to better concentrate on my studies for all the fucking help that did. It follows the adventures of magical cute girl military general person Tanya doing decidedly uncute things from the first moment we meet her. In episode 1 alone, she looks about ready to disembowel some motherfuckers under her command who decide to play a hero against said command, send them to a seemingly safe place when in fact she knew it would get them killed, straight up decapitates another motherfucker, and then uses some sort of religion based spell to wipe out the surviving friends of said decapitee out. And the episode ends on something that is very high on the batshit yandere face scale. So at the end of episode 1, we know Tanya is Yundere for the Republic, aka Magical Germany. Magic is a thing and she is good at it. She's a big supporter of God considering that he seemingly empowers her spells when she prays. And then episode 2 comes along and tells us we are so fucking wrong. Episode 2 takes place in Japan, and not fantasy pre-World War 1 Japan. No, I mean everyday, average, modern day Japan. Where we meet random Japanese human resources, dude. Basically, the guy management tells to tell other people they're fired, and we meet him while he's doing thus, firing this other guy for not doing his job properly. Afterwards, he explains about how he basically thinks logic is better than emotions, especially when emotional people do irrational things, like going to the human resources guy who fired you, who was just doing what management told him to do, and pushing him in the way of an oncoming train. So then, just before impact, time stops and Mr. HR is understandably a bit freaked out when a voice claiming to be God, as in G.O. the one true deity, be begins using nearby people as sock puppets to talk to Mr. HR, who tells him with the absolute most amount of non-existent fucks I have ever seen anyone in the face of an actual deity that he is an atheist and as such he refuses to call him God and instead settles on being X then proceeds to tear this peeing ex a new asshole and tell him he's doing a shit job of being a god, and informs him that no, he doesn't care to begin worshipping him, and that the only people who place their belief in god are those who are in situations of great strife, have low social status, and do not understand how the world works. Being X then proceeds to emulate the majority of his followers and ignores the entirety of his well thought out argument in order to focus the part that benefits him. Then he decides to reincarnate HR guy as a small baby girl named Tanya in what is essentially magical Germany pre World War I in an orphanage. As the story progresses, we see Tanya as she lives out her life in this new world so different yet similar to her birth world, and how she interacts with those around her as she enters the army. And thus the story goes as such. Tanya enlists in the army at the age of 10, is accepted for some bizarre reason, and attempts to use her genius intellect in order to get some cushy desk job far away from the war itself. Unfortunately, she is a bit too intelligent for her own good, and mixing that with literal divine intervention, she sees herself constantly drawn back to the front lines and eventually given outright command of a group of soldiers in order to create her own personal squad of magical boys and girls. And speaking of divine intervention, let's talk about my favorite bits of the show, those between Tanya and Being X. After her reincarnation, Being X makes a couple of repeat appearances, stopping time in order to have arguments with Tanya and starting plots all in the effort to get her to have faith in him. They start as dubiously helpful miracles and blessings and become increasingly antagonistic as time goes by, culminating by the end of the season in each declaring war on each other, Tanya vocally and being X in actions. The Saga of Tanya the Evil is the first anime I've watched a complete season of in quite a while, and it thoroughly entertained me throughout its 12 episode season. I highly recommend you check it out, which isn't that difficult considering it can be found subbed on Crunchyroll, the version I watched, and dubbed on Funimation, of which I haven't watched, so I can't give you an opinion on the voice work. Alright, that's been my thoughts and opinions on the Saga of Tanya the Evil. If you like this video, feel free to like it and subscribe, and if you didn't like it, well, we got a button for that too. And if you really liked my content for whatever reason, well, feel free to 
help me financially via Patreon, a single-time donation, or even check out my Amazon wishlist. Alright, that's been me for the day. Um, yep, still got no idea how to end these, end these things. Goodbye.